the first thing is to always meet and greet the patient. After meet and greet, introduce yourself. One thing is very much important that as soon as the patient is coming, you should examine his gait because this will be used later on for examination purposes. After you introduce yourself, you are going to ask the patient or you will be given command to examine a specific ear. For example, is given to examine the right ear. So we are going to ask the patient to look a little bit on the left side. The first step of examination is inspection. In inspection, it is divided into three parts. It's the preauricular region, it's the auricular region, and it's the postauricular region. In the preauricular region, you have to examine the area in the preauricular region and the tragus. Then you have to examine the pinna, and then you have to examine the post-auricular region. This will come in the domain of inspection. On inspection of the pre-auricular region, we are going to look for any scar marks over here, any swellings, any fistula, any sinuses. Then we are going to examine the tragus. On tragus, you are going to look for the shape of the tragus and you are also going to look for any extra cartilage or any other scar mark. Then you are going to look at the shape of the ear. First of all, you are going to see whether there is a presentable ear or not. If there is no ear, that is called as anotia or enosia. Then you are going to look at the size of the ear. If it's small, it is called as microtia. If it's large, it can be called as macrotia. Then you have to look for the lobule. You might find certain swellings over here, for example, like keloids or uh, any other traumatic uh, signs on the lobule. Then you have to look for the post auricular region. You have to gently pull the air forward and you are going to just inspect the post auricular region. In the post auricular region, you have also to look for any scar mark, any swelling, any redness, any tenderness. You are just going to look. The incisions usually seen on the air are, which are organized incision and which are of different type of surgeries are, you can see a modified blare incision starting from the pre auricular region. You can see another incision in the tragus area which can be used for uh, when the tragal cartilage has been taken for any kind of repair of the tympanic membrane or nose. You can also see an incision in the uh, incisura terminalis which is called as Lempert's incision which can be seen in the incisura terminalis which will indicate whether the patient, patient had end oral approach. You can also see an incision mark on the post auricular region which is called as wild incision which will indicate that the patient had a mustard exploration history. After inspection, the next step is palpation. In palpation, you have to gently palpate the pre-auricular region of the patient and you are going to look for any tenderness, any swelling, any redness present. Then you are going to gently palpate the tragus and you are going to look at the grimace of the patient. If there is pain on pressing the tragus, it means the tragal sign is positive and the patient is having otitis externa. Then you have to examine the rest of the pinna by gently palpating and look for warm, warm and tenderness. Then you have to gently pull the pinna and look for region, postauricular region. You have to gently palpate for look any tenderness or any swelling. Although the air should be examined under light, but due to extensive glare in the recording, we have to uh, switch off the light so it can be better, better visualized. We have to proceed with the naked eye exa examination of the uh, external auditory canal. You are simply going to uh, switch on your headlight which should be switched on already. Just ask the patient to look on the right side. Simply pull the tragus forward and pull the pinna outward and lateral and examine the external auditory canal. Examine the external auditory canal whether it's stenotic, it's dilated, whether you see any foreign body, you see any pus, you see any polyp, you see any mass or you see any bleeding. After that, then you are going to examine the air using air speculum. You are simply going to take the air speculum in the right hand if you are examining the right hand and you are simply going to pull the pinna from the left hand and insert the speculum in rotatory movement and examine the external auditory canal. This will help you in pushing the hair follicles on the side and you will be able to visualize the tympanic membrane properly. Now, it is very much important to change the direction of the speculum to the left hand when examining the left ear. You have to pull the pinna with the right hand and you have to examine it with left hand simply by rotating it and examining the tympanic membrane.
The next step is to examine it with otoscope. For otoscope, it is necessary that your headlight should be switched off. Switch off your headlight, switch on your otoscope, and simply pull the pinna and hold the otoscope like a pen. This should be hold like a pen. Your this place should rest on the zygoma. Simply put it on the zygoma, hold it like a pen, pull the pinna and gently insert it and look through the magnifying glass. Be in the uh, for the right ear it should be in the right hand. For the left ear, it should be in the left hand. As usual, hold it like a pen, press it on your zygoma, the zygoma of the patient. Simply pull the pinna and insert it and examine the air under magnifying glass. Once you have examined the air using otoscope, the most important step which is usually missed is then you have to examine the facial nerve. First complete the anatomical examinations. For facial nerve examination, you have to look for the last branches of facial nerve. For facial nerve examination, you have simply to ask the patient to put your hand on the forehead and ask the patient to look up. Upar dekhe. Look at the frowns on the forehead. Then you have to ask the patient to close his eyes. Aankhye band kar lo. Zor se band kar lo. Mere khonne hai. And you are going to forcefully try to open it. Then you have asked the patient to put air in his mouth. And you are going to try to punch slowly, gently tap it. Then you are going to ask the patient to clench his teeth. And you are going to look at the angle of the mouth and you are going to look at the muscle of the neck which is platysma. In the meantime, you are also going to examine the angle of the mouth. Proceed with the physiological test of the ear. The most common you are going to be asked is to do hearing assessment test. In hearing assessment test, the first test we are going to do is Rini's test. In Rini's test, we can proceed with two types of Rini's but you have to do the one which will take less time which is which I am going to proceed now. You are simply going to put, uh, you are first going to explain the procedure to the patient, then you are simply going to strike it against your elbow and you are going to put it beyond the mastoid and in front of the external rotator canal and you are simply going to ask the patient which one was louder. Yeah. Yeah. You are asked to do the Weber, so you have to do the Rini's on both ears. To do Weber's, in Weber's you can put your tuning fork on three places, but we usually prefer the vertex or the glabella. It can also be put on the upper teeth. You are simply going to strike it against your elbow and you are going to put it over here in this condition. You are simply going to ask the patient in which ear does he hear better. Always remember that always put the foot plate on the mustard. You have to put the foot plate on the mustard for hearing. The next important thing is the prongs of the tuning fork should be parallel to the external auditory canal. Then we have got absolute bone conduction. In absolute bone conduction, you ask the patient to cover his tragus. And you simply strike it against the elbow and you put over here and ask the patient that he hears the sound or not. When he stops hearing, then you have to take the tuning fork and put it on your ear and you have to close your ear. If you both do not hear the sound, which means that it finished over here, you are normal. The difference between absolute bone conduction and Schwabach is that in absolute bone conduction, we ask the patient to close the stragus, but in Schwabach, we do not ask to close the stragus. You are simply going to strike it against the elbow and you are simply going to put it over here and you are going to ask the patient whether he hears it or not. As soon as he stops hearing, you have to put it on your mustard and you have to compare it with the patient's hearing. Pinch test. In the pinch test, uh, test, we again ask the patient to cover his tragus on off, on off, on off. He is asked to close it, open it, close it, open it, close it, open it. And you have to put the mud over here and he is going to close it and open it. This is called as pinch test. Oh, the difference between the ENT assessment of vestibular and the medical assessment. So we have to examine all parameters. First, we are going. The first thing we are going to assess is the first parameter is nystagmus. 
you're simply going to ask the patient to follow the tip of the finger and you're going to ask him to follow it. You're going to look at the eyes and you're going to look for any kind of nystigmas. Remember that your hand should not go more than 30 degree or it will produce a natural gaze evoke nystigmas. Remember also that it's not like the eye examination you have to create an H. You do not need to create an H over here. You simply need to take your finger 30 degrees and back to the center and 30 degrees to the center and look for nystigmas. The second thing you're going to do is you're simply going to do, you're going to push the triggers and you are going to look for nystigmas in the eye of the patient which is called as fistula test. You know? The third thing is as I already mentioned in the start that whenever the patient will come in you are going to assess his gait. Although in short, short examinations you are not asked to assess the gait but you have still to explain to the patient or doctor that we will examine the gait of the patient. The next thing then you are going to do is to examine the, uh, in the gate, gate can be examined by doing Romberg test. The most important examination which is missed during the ENT examination for vertigo is the dix pike test. You will be asked to do the dix pike test, although if a bed is available you can proceed with dix pike test, although this is not a sufficient position for the, pa uh, for the patient to produce dix pike test, but still I am going to give you the basic idea. You are always going to ask the patient to look on the 45 degree and you are going to take his head and bend down below the uh, edge of the bed for 30 degrees. When you take the head down along 30 degrees along the edge of the bed, you examine the stigmas. After the ENT part is done, then you usually look for the cerebellar part which contains the gait, which contains the uh, pass pointing, the finger nose test, the dysdidokinesias. We also look for those so we can rule out whether the vertigo belongs to cerebellar part or the inner ear part. After each and every ear examination, you have to examine the lymph nodes. Cervical lymph nodes must. It is a very must part which is usually missed by the students.